I'm joined uh, today for the Leadership During Challenging Times by my partner and good friend, uh, Jared Slotnick, uh, who's been a partner of the agency for a long time. Um, how's it going, Jared? Going well. It's great to see you. Excellent. You have such a beautiful background. It almost feels like you're in, you know, like some kind of virtual reality simulation. <laughs> yeah, what you see is what you get. It's, it's all real. It's all real. If this is uh, the new normal, I don't mind it. And it really is wonderful to see you. We've been talking a lot throughout this crisis, but just to, to see the way that direct agents is really rising to the challenge and helping a broad ecosystem, not just friends and families, customers, but really you know, lifting everyone in the marketing community that's doing the hard work to get small businesses through this. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, and I think it's great to have partners like yourself uh, tune into the conversation. And thanks again to... Jackson and Shireen from Digiday for, for really like bringing up some great points in terms of what everyone's facing today. Um, so let's just jump right into this. Um, you know, obviously leadership during this time is, is a whole new way of approaching things. Talk to me about um, what are some things that you're doing in terms of how you're approaching leadership um, at Google and, and what are some, some things that you're seeing effective? So I'm in, I'm in a really fortunate position yeah, the, the company has created an environment for us to be successful and continues to do that. And I'll share some of the ways. But more than that, I work with amazing teammates that have shown me what's possible in the darkest situations and really revealed the true character of leadership. So what, I, what I'm going to share with you today is, is what I've learned from them. Um, and where we started was really, you know, a focus on staying informed, prepared, and not panicking. The last part's a bit tricky, but I thought maybe I'll share a little bit on each with you. Sure, sounds good. So on staying informed, you know, we're really trying to focus on only a few authoritative websites to get information. So we're looking at the CDC, the World Health Organization. Uh, we launched a resource, google.com slash COVID-19 to have all of this authoritative information available. There's also for our small business community, uh, a dedicated site on Think with Google. It is small business dot with google.com and it's so important to have these consolidated curated authoritative resources to guide our efforts so once we've got that information now what do we do with it you know i think we'll talk in a, in a bit more detail about how we're structuring our teams what processes stay the same versus which ones are are changed but something i just want to share personally that i'm really grateful for is you know i happen to have uh, set up a tablet in my grandma's apartment and she's got Google Duo on it. And of all the things in terms of preparation, you know, that was one that I just could not have foreseen how important it would be in order to have that connection with her. And so being able to, to just see my friends and family, see my grandma has been so important throughout this. Sure. Uh, in terms of not panicking, this is, you know, probably the hardest one what we've been trying to do is, is really be conscious and intentional about our media diet. You know, I try not to, to watch the news at night, uh, even you know, if it's Governor Cuomo, as uplifting as he's been. Um, I try to, to, to keep that in, in, a, in a balanced, uh, limited fashion. And then as a team, you know, we talk about bringing the weather to every meeting. And that's not about being delusional, it's just being about optimistic. Let's see what is possible and let's bring that to the room and allow others to respond and feel that warmth of our energy. So that's kind of how we're thinking about staying informed, prepared, and doing our best not to panic. Absolutely. Yeah, and then I'll just share quickly from the agency perspective, um, you know, similar to what you said in terms of the not panic, um, I think a lot of it is just preparation. So we were fortunate enough to start planning for this as soon as we started seeing any news about it. Um, like a lot of our partners that are probably listening today, we pivoted quickly to move remotely. Um, then, you know, it's obviously the next set of challenges, right? For, for your teams, like how, how does the communication happen? How does the culture happen? How do you keep that same energy as a company? Uh, and so similar to kind of what you were saying, I think we've been very fortunate to have an amazing team in-house. Um, but one of the things we focused on from the beginning was looking at those, you know, those resources that are out there, making informed decisions. Um, and so we're thinking from, actual fact than emotion because it gets very emotional fast right like we start dealing with the day-to-day -day of this um and so you know obviously thinking about what we need to do as a company but then thinking about the day-to-day -day of like how people are feeling how people are reacting to this right. um and then you know 
you bring up Governor Cuomo, and I think a great point that he makes in an article in the Wall Street Journal, I think today, was about transparency. And we really focused on that in terms of being transparent top down from the beginning of this and just giving people more and more insight into what's changing, how are we handling this from the leadership perspective, what are our partners saying, what are the other CEOs saying in the industry, what are partners like Google doing? So I think we've taken those cues to be a transparent company. And I think that really helps because the first thing that people are worried about is one, am I healthy? Am I safe? Two, is my job safe? Three, you know, is it safe to go work in the work environment that I have to go back to? Or when happened? So we've been trying to stay ahead of that too by messaging, okay, here's what the next week looks like, week by week. Here's what's happening, you know, for, for the next two weeks. Here's what the government's saying. Here's how you should interpret that. So I think just, you know, a lot of things that you guys are probably doing at Google, we're thinking um, for our, you know, 80 person agency, like how can we, alleviate all those fears and frustrations and and still remain focused on on what our and our hearing directly are, from you, know? you and so the direct agents blog is a wealth of information but one of the first messages was one directly from you around what you were doing in in light of this crisis and i think you know that's a a common theme between you know what you were referencing with governor cuomo and what you've been doing as an agency and a partner we were in a very fortunate position where a lot of our our business practice and process was well positioned to move to this distributed work environment. But there are a lot of others that, that were not prepared for this. And I just want to share a couple of things that I think we've both been doing, but maybe the, the audience would benefit from. Sure. And, and this was, you know, uh, I, I heard it in your first message. It was the first message uh, from me to the team. And it was around getting connected, being connected, and staying connected. And in terms of getting connected, this is about the logistics. You know, do you have a room, a chair, or do you have schedules lined up across time zones? Um, you know, easier said than done. And, you know, one kind of uh, interesting lens of this is, you know, we're starting to see into, into our respective colleagues and partners, uh, you know, work from home environments. And so I, I don't know if you've seen it, but I have a few tips here from Tom Ford. And I sure. thought, would you like to hear those? Sure. Okay. You may have seen this because um, there, there was a New York Times article about it. And, and of all places or of all people, um, Tom Ford communicated this information through Larry David. So he, yep. here's what uh, the famed fashion designer uh, had to say about your home work setup and, and how you get connected. First, uh, put the computer on a stack of books so the camera is slightly higher than your head. Stay about the top of your head and then point it down into your eyes. Then take a tall lamp and set it next to the computer on the side of your face you feel is best. I haven't quite figured this out, but Tom Ford always seems to be coming at you from a specific angle. Uh, the lamp should be in line with and slightly behind the computer so the light falls nicely on your face. And the last one, this is a, I, you know, I'm trying this today. You'll tell me if it helps at all, but I've got a piece of white paper or a white tablecloth on the table so that it bounces the light up really nicely. Right. And then he talks about powder, but honestly, I don't know what to do with that. It seems like it didn't <laughs> help, but uh, so, so that's on getting connected. And then you know, just sure. quickly on, on being connected and feeling connected. You know, being connected is all about the tech. You know, we're here on a Zoom webinar, which is amazing. You know, I, I can't help but tell uh, the audience that if you are a, a G Suite or a G Suite for Education customer, you have free access to advanced uh, Google Meet. And that's 250 participants live streaming to 100,000 viewers. Whatever platform you want to use, just make sure the tech is there to support the communication. And then the last part, which is something that you were touching on on the emotional side, feeling connected. This is what matters most. This is about the human side of things. And one of our teammates who you work with, Dinesh, John, has a practice where he sends a question of the day every morning. And, and the purpose of this is just relax the conversation when we are having meetings to connect with each other, to learn something about each other, to build that intimacy, intimacy that's so important to trust. Uh, one other small thing that we do is at the beginning of a team meeting, we ask everybody, if you're comfortable, let's go around the room and say, uh, one to 10, how are you feeling today? You know, so some days I might be at a four and that's perfectly fine. In fact, what, you've, what you realize going around the room is that others are also at a four and that's a cue for us to pick each other up. And sometimes someone's at a seven or even an eight and that's great. We should celebrate that too. The, the, the point of this is to relax, be okay with where you're at and be okay reaching out to help each other. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and these are all great points. And I'll, I'll add a couple of things from the agency side. Just, Please. I mean, I think one is just celebrating those small wins. So it's like looking at internal things that you can share and, and, and celebrate that. And I think we've all taken more time out for that, that just human side of how you're feeling. What do you, you know, what did you do last night? We all did the same thing, right? We all watched TV, <laughs> we cooked dinner, we're, we're home. So I think there's that like running joke of like, Where'd you go to celebrate? I went in my living room, or you know, in my bedroom, like the other so side like, of the couch. Yeah, exactly. So that, there's that conversation, but then, then I think just kind of getting into the feelings of of the reality of what we all face. We were all open about it, and we, I think it's great we share that. From the HR side of things, we've really focused on developing this virtual culture, and that's really helped us as a company. Our um, Sarah Martinez, who's going to be speaking later um, with JustWorks, has been you know, really leading charge in terms of just little things that bring people together. Like we have an everyday, like a little water cooler talk session where it's like 15 minutes where everyone could go on and, and chat about whatever. There's the pet break that we do. So people showcase their pets in the 15, 20 minute session. We have an ongoing um, NFL type combine right now where there's different teams doing different things. And so there's like a push up challenge, there's a plank challenge, there's, you know, different things like that that bring the agency together. We've also been doing like virtual workouts together. So we bring in, um, you know, maybe sometimes we've had a trainer, sometimes we've had people just join in and, and sort of coordinate a session together. Um, so I think it's just thinking about that. But one of the things, you know, maybe you guys are doing also is just developing an internal content uh, library. So people are just creating like user generated content in their homes and maybe we'll have a theme like yesterday we had everyone's like affirmations of like mm. what what are they feeling good about what you should be you know what's what's making you get through this thing and then we we just put together a little montage that sh we shared in a company all hands um so i think you know the disconnectedness makes you the community of, of the, the agency of the company is so important right now that we're trying to just keep telling that internal story our last conversation was all about culture yeah. and those investments are, are paying off. They do all the time, but it's even more evident now. Yeah. The, the affection that your team has for each other's is what's driving the quality work that you're doing for your customers. Yeah. The, the way that you are, you know, the trust that you have, the informal fun moments that you inject throughout every day, Perfect. so important. You know, that's how we get through this. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, that is, goes into, one of the things we do, we just encourage everyone to just do a random check-in with someone you never talked to and say like, how are you doing? Like, what are you, what are you doing today? How, how are you dealing with this? So I think all of those things are just like making us kind of get through this. Um, and just like the community is something I look forward to every day when I'm in that moment of doubt. I know I have the community that I, that I work with. Right. So, and the partners like yourself. So I, I think those are really important things. That's, you know, for us, that's, we have two principles that we're operating from. One, you know, take care of, of your, take care of your people and yourselves. We don't do anything until that's secure. And then after that, we're trying to hustle hard and stay humble. We're, you know, our team at Google is, is known as team hustle. And so there, you know, when we get into that side of it, the business side of it and how we help our customers, you know, there, there are a few things that we've done mostly around communication and decision-making, but a lot of the process has stayed the same. And I thought maybe I'd, I'd share a, a couple things that we've done and, and we'd love to hear from you, you know, sure. how this, any adjustments you've made. Uh, so we, we started working in a distributed fashion on March 10th. So we're, we're coming up on a, a month here. And like I said, you know, we talked about those, the importance of those two, two principles, taking care of our people and ourselves and then hustle hard, stay humble. The things that we've done differently in terms of, you know, how we manage the business on a daily and weekly basis We've created support squads that check in at the beginning and end of each week. And it's great to set an intention, personally, professionally, whatever it is, this is what I hope to accomplish. And your, your support squad helps keep you accountable for that. Uh, we've introduced a fireside chat that I do uh, every Wednesday. And you know, back to where we started at the beginning, so important to hear directly from the leader of a team, full transparency, Here's what's going on. Here's how we can anticipate changes and to celebrate all the great work that's happening. Uh, we do daily standups for some of the teams, you know, just checking in the morning, here are my priorities. We've seen a, lo a lot of really great cooperation happen as a result that typically would have been, you know, a chair swivel and talking to the person that sits, you know, through right. you. Know. We've increased the duration of our one-on-ones. And I think the value of this is to make sure that we're getting at the hard things. And, and with a constrained amount of time, it's difficult to feel comfort in order to share the thing that you're avoiding yourself. 
And so increasing the duration of that. But importantly, you know, we're, we're trying to balance giving people free time and not just free time to do more work, but free time to be themselves and to, to just make sure that they're moving and breathing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in work when there's no physical distinction between your work and your, your personal space. Right. right. Uh, the last part is, you know, we've really focused on uh, written communication. You know, a lot more of our, of our progress, our challenges, our wins are being communicated in a written fashion because we're not meeting together as often. We're not in the same workspace for those informal moments. Right. And this, I think, is, is an incredible skill that we're sharpening as a team and able to help our customers, able to help our teammates as a result. Absolutely. That's, no, that's, that's really great. And let's get into the customers for a moment, you know, in terms of clients, in terms of, um, you know, what, what are you seeing that's been effective in terms of just dealing with your customers and your clients and how, how, that's, how that's going? The, where we operate from with, with customers and with everything in this crisis is empathy, vulnerability, and courage. And for anybody that has any questions about this, you know, listen to Brene Brown talk about it. Vulnerability is courage. Yeah, uh, and for us, you know, so many of our, our family and friends run small businesses. Our customers who we speak with every day are facing really difficult times. Right. We are aware of our privilege working at a company like Google, and we don't take any of that for granted. We're working overtime to make sure that our customers are set up for success. And so, you know, a few ways that this manifests is, I think our team has a sense that we are a mirror to what the customer is facing. Right. Yeah, they can see it in our eyes. They can hear it in our communications. And yet we also have to be a window into where they're going. We have to be that positive light to get them through this and to be stronger together as a result. So we've observed some trends that are happening in the, in the environment with consumers. Yeah, and, and I'll just share a few and then I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing to help. Sure. We're seeing, uh, we're using this acronym ADAPTS. So A, assembling critical information and content they need to get by. Discovering new connections and nurturing relationships. And this is, these are things personally and professionally. This is what a consumer is doing on a daily basis. We're adjusting routines and schedules to meet the demands of voluntary isolation. You, you, you probably have examples of this in your own life, but you know, so much of what we're trying to do in work is adjust to where consumers are going. Even look at the differences between weekend and weekday internet usage. There's been a lot of shifts in that. Your blog, again, has incredible insights on this. Praising the everyday heroes who have stepped up in this critical moment, you know, whether you're clapping from your, your window or just saying thank you for the person that's at the grocery store, the frontline healthcare workers, there are heroes among us. Uh, taking care of physical and psychological needs, you know, and again, because we're in New York, uh, Governor Cuomo, I think, has really done a lot for mental health and putting this front and center as something that's important. The volunteer work that's coming out of it is just remarkable, and I think we're going to see a permanent shift in terms of how we treat mental health based on this experience. And the last part of that acronym ADAPTS is seeing favorite experiences in a whole new way. And so I think, you know, this, this work from home experiment that's happening globally is going to change the definition of experience for a lot of us. And, and how do we adapt to that as brand builders, as marketers? Absolutely. No, these are really great, great concepts. A um, couple of things that we're doing, I'll just share with you. I mean, obviously, you know, we're connecting with our, our partners all the time. So that emotional level of connection, that next level of connection of just saying, seeing how these business leaders and um, partners are, are navigating the space and, and just getting to know what their pains and frustrations are. Um, two is just anticipating. So, it, you know, we know if an industry is, is really affected, like how can we help? How can we work with them to get through this crisis or how can we change up a team structure or resource allocation to, to still keep them on as a partner, but get through those like crucial months. Right. And so mm -hmm. there, there's always work to be done. Maybe we step back in the relationship, but we still are there as, in some way that we can keep helping them. Um, the other thing I think is just giving more of the thought leadership and, and being front and center. Like, and, and we feel fortunate to be in a position to host an event like today where we're, we're talking with great people like yourself, and presenting, um, and so we want to continue that, right? So we want to be the resource. We want to be the front and center where clients can look to, because they're, you know, everyone's opening their door and saying, "What is going on? How do we? How? Wh who has information about this?" And, and a lot of times, like I've spoke to a client today, where it's like internal conversations are 
one is anxiousness two is should we spend should we not should we you know should we change everything like everything we had planned for this year is upside down what do we do you know so it's like having that conversation saying you're not alone like there are things happening but we have ways to to strategize for that or we're rethinking like you said internet usage we're rethinking of when time ads are served we're rethinking the way creative is presented or messaging is presented so i think it's helping those clients like pivot quickly and getting outside of their own daily frustration in the box that they live in just like the boxes that we live in are are just so narrow and, and sometimes can be scary right so i think we're, we're doing that and we're also just offering more insights in terms of trend reports analysis getting all our teams to sort of pull together like outside of our expectation of hey look we are doing a great job maintaining the account we're seeing results but what else can we do you know so we're thinking about like that over communication and over servicing so that no matter what our clients are going to say you know what they had our back or there's something that we need like we're going to call them we're going to figure this out together it's a challenge that we're in together and we've had a lot of those conversations like as soon as it started ha happening it was like we were just pivoting of how to maintain that connection and and still like you said earlier that stop the panic moment and so so i think it's continuing those conversations being realistic about what's going to work what's not going to be work and where we can invest in that makes sense um i i love how you flex between the strategy and the tactics right. and we have to be able to operate at, at both levels you know something that you just made me think of we've been talking about as a team is in any given day or week you know ideally there's this nice cool calm you know, collected, uh, you know, outlook that allows you to, to act in a really thoughtful way, to respond, not react. Yeah. But I think inevitably we have these experiences that cause that, that nice, you know, straight, even you know, line to go up and down. It's that volatility. And what we're trying to understand about ourselves and our teams and our customers is, you know, what's the frequency of those, of those ups and downs? And what's the right. magnitude of those ups right. and downs? And I think you know, the way that you uh, describe the situation and the actions that your team is taking represents this equanimity, you know, this understanding of, of who you are and how you can be helpful and allows you to move from you know, this, this like feeling of indecision to here's how we can help, here's how we can move forward. And on that note, you know, we've been talking about there are customers in different situations and we wanna be respectful of that and we wanna be helpful in the way that the customer needs. And so a few ways that, that we've been talking about this, and you know, I know Maddie's paying attention to the chat, and we're going to do some follow-up after this, but sure. you know, if, people, if customers are out there and you have questions about anything that we talked about and want to follow up, please uh, communicate that through the chat or directly through the direct agent's team. Uh -huh. But there, there are a few customer types that we've been looking at. You know, one is marketing may not make sense right now. You might be really focused on how do we just generate positive cash flow in the next 30 days? And we're talking to a lot of customers that are in that situation. And again, friends and family are in that situation too. A lot of respect for that. And the work that you're doing, even just to make it through is hard and you should be proud of it. Right. right. There, are, there are some that are, you know, looking at the situation short term, medium term, and maybe just trying to fine tune the, the approach. So if right. you were previously trying to expand nationally, maybe it's time to zero in on that local approach. Right. Uh, work on campaign hygiene. You know, think about how you're going to emerge from this right. and, and let's make sure you're set up to, to be even stronger. There are some customers that are pivoting. And I think, you know, one of the largest scale experiments that we're seeing is the restaurant industry. Sure. You know, there may be a whole different model of running a restaurant after this. You know, specifically, how much of your business is in restaurant versus delivery or pickup? And so that's an area where an offline business is pivoting to online and, and our teams are doing some of the most creative work that we've ever done because of this situation. Right. right. And, the, and the last piece is you may be investing. You may actually be in an industry where, you know what, all the circumstances put together allow you to build a bigger business than you ever had before. Sure. Uh, you know, disinfectant wipes, toilet paper, you know, the, uh, the bean producers at farmers markets have never been more popular. Right. And so how can we help those companies create what's called excess share of voice? And this is something another teammate has been coaching me on. You know, how do you go into this, build a brand, even in a competitive category or where demand is high so that when you leave this whole thing, you are known for what you intend to be known for and can right. build an even stronger, bigger, more robust business as a result. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think two points, and, and I'm going to answer a question that came in while I 
you know, respond to what you're saying, I think is that, you know, we've, we've been fortunate as an agency to, uh, the majority of our clients are thinking about investing and still growing through this. Um, but it's the question that came in was, you know, what happens in, how do you approach a client that, you know, when's the right time to approach a client through this, this whole crisis that may not feel that comfortable to talk about growth and to talk about the next step. And I think, you know, from our perspective, we're doing things like exactly like what you said, pivoting to something specific, maybe it's scaling back an idea that was gonna be a, a bigger campaign and picking one of those things to focus on, um, looking for small wins that you, you know, we can celebrate together with the client. So if, if it's not putting um, you know, your money in, in something that was um, what you did forever, but now it's completely gone, what, whatever channel that is. Like we're thinking like maybe that's an investment in more data research or analytics or um, you know, cleaning house in terms of an, an, a user flow on your website or, or repurposing your creative assets. So I think thinking about what you can do, and, and I think the biggest point for, for everyone that you just mentioned is what happens after this? You know, so what does your business look like coming out of the crisis? And, and what's that, that, you know, and what is that next step? What is that opportunity? Because, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to succeed and, and be, and be happy through the work that we're doing. So there is, there is an end goal, right? So I think thinking about that with our clients and planning for that, that point of when this thing starts to pivot and we start to get out of this, this cycle that there's an opportunity that, that we can all benefit from. I have a question for you, Dinesh. Yeah. And more macro view. Yeah. What do you think is something that has changed because of this experience that we should keep even after we're through this? That's a big question. Um, I think it's the connectivity, the personal connection that we're all making. I mean, you know, I don't want to get too sentimental in here, but like I think we've all connected as people in a much different way. One with our families, two. Um, you know, with the people that we work with. So, you know, if anything, I'd say it's like keeping that element of connection, um, both, you know, with our professional world and our personal world, and also just like that next level of relationship with our clients. Like I've got to know the clients that I work with more than I ever have. And, and, and understanding that there's like such a human side that, that we can continue to learn from um, that, you know, I, I hope will stay. I, I feel the same way. And I'm, you know, the family, a hangouts I do every week. Uh, yeah. It's a recurring calendar invite, and I'm not planning on stopping that. Yeah. And the way that we, the way that we listen when we ask, "How are you?" Yeah. I think has changed, and and we should forever, you know, give it a couple more beats to really connect on a human level. And yeah. I think it's so important, and you said it well, and and I feel it in our friendship, in our business partnership, and I know, you know, if nothing else, this audience walked away with with at least a little bit of optimism that, you know, business is focused on, on the people and we right. will get through this stronger because of that. Absolutely. Um, so I think we're going to have to wrap now, um, but thank you again for joining us. Uh, and we'll hopefully we'll continue more of these in, in the future. Um, and Never we're going to go. Absolutely. And uh, I think the next session is going to be, as I mentioned, Sarah Martinez, who heads up our HR uh, alongside just works. Uh, presenting on people and culture. So some more to be discussed and more to be learned. Right. So tune into uh, that. Hi, Sarah. Yes. So if everyone can stay, uh, the, if everyone can just check the, the chat, there's going to be a link that's shared for the next session. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared.